This video covers the two most successful techniques I use to graft figs and many other types of fruit trees. The most reliable grafting technique I use is whip and tongue. Start by selecting a one year old scion of about the same diameter as the rootstock. Make a single bevel of identical length in both the scion and the rootstock. Check the cuts to see if both bevels have the same length. Cut a tongue at the same point in both the rootstock and the scion. Keep the depth of the cut under control with a gentle rocking motion. Secure the scion firmly and maintain a good control of the knife when doing the tongue on the scion. The depth of both tongues should be identical. If the scion doesn't cover the rootstock completely, place it to one side of the bevel. You can secure the graft using a rubber band. One advantage of the rubber band is that it stretches with the graft as it grows. Nevertheless, I prefer to use natural raffia as it allows a more firm contact and adjustment between scion and rootstock. After a few weeks, the raffia will have to be cut, so it doesn't strangle the graft. With more delicate scions, like with figs, I cover the graft and the scion with parafilm. This will protect the graft and the scion from dehydration. In late spring and summer, I always protect the graft from direct sun with aluminium foil. When the sap flow is strong, make a few shallow cuts below the graft to release pressure. A good alternative to aluminium foil is using old paper envelopes to cover the graft. When grafting in early spring, a padded envelope works as a greenhouse and provides an extra layer of protection. Remember to cut the top corners of the envelope after a few weeks to let some light inside. My second go-to technique is ship budding. With this technique I can remove several buds, increasing the number of grafts from one single scion. Select a well developed bud and keep the chip in place until you use it to avoid dehydration. 
remove all lower buds from the rootstock to avoid competition. Make a slot of the same length of the chip in the rootstock. It's better to be conservative at first. You can always make the slot longer, but not shorter. Correct the length of the slot if needed. Place the chip so it crosses the cambium layer at least on one side of the slot. Protect the chip with parafilm. If you start wrapping from the bottom, you will find out that the chip will move when you apply pressure and you will have to keep readjusting it. Only one stretched layer of parafilm should cover the bud. Cheap buds that aren't protected from the sun with aluminium foil will dry out and fail. Cheap bud grafting will have a better chance of success if you follow these recommendations. Start by making a cut below the bud at a 45 degree angle. Maintain the depth of the cut sliding past the bud until you reach the first angle cut. Make an identical angle cut at the straight location in the rootstock. Try to match the size and width of the cut when making the slot. Adjust the chip firmly, so it stays in place. The lower flap is an important cambium contact point. Always start wrapping the parafilm from the top of the chip, so it doesn't move when you apply pressure. Always protect the chip bud from direct sun in the first couple of weeks. It's important to keep a good balance between branch growth and chip bud graft development. After two to three weeks, you can remove the sun protection. The grafted bud should be breaking the parafilm by then. After you see the bud developing, you can completely remove the parafilm or let it degrade naturally. This graft shows a breaking bud and a good graft union. Start clipping the upper growth of the branch so the grafted bud starts to develop. Always leave two to three old buds above the graft until it has grown a few inches. In the spring, a whip and tongue graft will start showing signs of development after 4 weeks. Even if there are no leaves, always remove the raffia and put a film after a couple of months.
If the craft has green buds and the union is solid, you can remove all protections. When using natural raffia, never forget to cut it or remove it after 6 to 8 weeks. A successful graft will show a solid union and, at least, a green tip. In windy areas, you might need to wrap or support the graft to avoid breakage. Never leave these wraps for too long or they might strangle new graft growth. When using envelopes to protect the grafts, be sure to open them after 2 to 3 weeks so new leaves can develop. If you left a few buds below the graft point, be sure to remove the new growth. Failure to remove rootstock growth might stop graft development due to competition. Maintain vigorous graft growth in check and support new branches or they might break with strong winds. With interesting new varieties, you might be tempted to leave a few fruits in new developing grafts. If you do, never leave more than one or two fruits or the graft will not develop fully. Despite the drawbacks, leaving a fruit in a new graft will help when you need to confirm a variety or the quality of the fruit. Don't forget that fruits from new grafts will never be as good as they can be after a couple of years. Whip grafts will have the fastest development and can reach several feet and produce new fruits in just one or two years. Cheap bud grafts will take a bit longer and will have to be carefully followed to develop correctly. A single pruned old fig tree will produce new growth quickly and these new branches can support several grafts from different varieties. These new grafts can later be air layered to produce new independent fig trees of the desired variety. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment and share the video 
to support the channel. Leave me a comment if you would like me to make a video about the fig varieties I am growing.